is going on guys welcome back to another video so we are now halfway through the nhl season most teams have played between like around 40 and 42 games at the time of filming this on martin luther king day happy martin luther king day to all you guys so i wanted to run through my updated awards ballots we're going to go one through five i'm going to flash the ballot up who do i have first second third fourth fifth based on what happened in these 40 to 42 games i am not doing any projecting on this for example a guy like Connor mcdavid i think he's going to end up being a goddamn heart finalist, but as of right now, he wouldn't be on my overall heart ballot. So just going on what has happened, how my, if I was submitting my awards right now, what they would look like. Obviously, I do not have an actual awards ballot to submit, but I love making these and I love talking to them, to this, about this, to you guys. So without further ado, we're going to start with the Vesna Trophy. Vesna Trophy, I got Hellebuck, Demko, Ingram, Markstrom, and Swayman. Hellebuck is a pretty decent favorite right now for me, although Thatcher Demko is definitely in second place right now. You look at Connor Hellebuck, 924 save percentage, 2.19 goals against. He's another work workhorse. He's played 31 out of Winnipeg's 42 games this season. And obviously, he has won a goddamn Vezina before, so I think he can keep this up. He would be my favorite as of right now going forward as well. Just very fantastic. Winnipeg is a good team overall, but he is definitely leading that team. Hit, hit, he might be on my heart ballot. So right now, Connor Hellbuck is number one for the Vezina for me. Demko, again, trailing behind 919 2.47 goals against average with a 22 8-1 record. Right now, I would say there's at least a 60, maybe even 70% chance that he ends up being a Vesna finalist. Him and DeSmith have formed one of the best tandems in the entire NHL. Third place, Connor Ingram out of nowhere, similar to Demko, has a 919 and 2.51 goals against. Has played a little bit less games, only comes in at 26 games with a 15 and 8 record. He is, in my opinion, the number one reason why the Coyotes are in this wild card hunt right now. Connor Ingram, we thought Vegemelka might take that next step and become Norris Caliber. It happened with Connor Ingram, and this guy was on goddamn waivers like 16 months ago. It's a really cool story, and you just love to see it. Jacob Markstrom in fourth place. Really having a resurgence was brutal last year, under 900 save percentage. Right now he has a 912, and he's like top three in most models in terms of goals saved above expected. By the way, Hellebuck has 19.8 goals saved above expected. Demko's around 16. Ingram's around 14. I think Markstrom is top three in basically every model when it comes to goals saved above expected. Doesn't have the best record. Doesn't have the best goals against, but he is playing fantastic for the Calgary Flames. I think the top four is pretty set. And then in fifth place, I ended up going with Jeremy Swayman. Jeremy Swayman has not been playing better of late and has only played in, I think, 23. Actually, today he just posted a shutout against the New Jersey Devils as I'm filming this. So right now he has a 919 and 10 goals saved above expected. I'm sure that's going to go up to like a 922 and like 12, 13 goals saved above expected once that shutout goes in. But he's been very good. He's basically not as good as Olmark last year, but he has turned into that number one guy in Boston. They obviously have the best duo in the entire NHL. One guy that you guys might think that I'm snubbing for this this ballot is Charlie Lindgren. Uh, I'm just going to be honest. He's only played 17 games on the season, only started 16 of those for the Washington Capitals who have played 41 games. I, 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 need, I need to make a cutoff somewhere. In my opinion, if you played less than half of your team's games, and especially in Lindgren's case, it's not even, it's like 45% of your team's games. I'm not really going to consider you seriously for the Vesna Trophy. If he plays great down the stretch, ends up with 43, 44 games and has a 925, he'll probably be on this ballot. But as of right now, just barely missed out. I think on a per game basis, he's arguably been top three. But when you compare that to Hellebuck, who's played 31 games, Demko, who's played 31 games, that's definitely different compared to a guy that is fresh and rested. Next up, we got the Jack Adams Trophy and right... Next up, we got the Jack Adams Award, and right now, I would give it to John Tortorella, considering the Flyers, basically everybody had them under like 85, definitely definitely 85, probably most 90% of people had them tanking this year, under 80 points. Right now, they have a 605 points percentage on pace for 99 goddamn points. I think what Tortorella has done with this group that isn't that talented of a group. They have some depth, but he's really been able to utilize, get the most out of his players, and obviously the goalie tandem is playing very good as well, but what he's done with this forward core, and especially this defense core, a guy like Sean Walker balling out, uh, Travis Sanheim having a bounce back season, it has been really impressive from Tortorella. Do I think he's going to end up winning it? Probably not, because I do think Flyers are going to sell some pieces at the deadline. It's just what's best for their future going forward, and I think a guy like Rick Tockett will end up winning the award, but right now, if it was mid-season, I 
I would go with John Tortorella. Talk, it's been fantastic, though. Obviously, the Canucks were an utter disaster last year, coaching change midseason, but he has really righted the ship as more of a player's coach. Everybody's having a goddamn career year on the Vancouver Canucks, and even though we talk about their PDO, we thought it was not going to be sustainable 20 games in. It somehow stays, stayed sustainable. Do I think they're going to end up north of 108, 110 points? No, but if they safely, safely make the playoffs in the Pacific Division right now, I think Rick Tockett, with, the, with what they went through last year, I think he's probably easily going to win. Rick Bonus also has been fantastic for the Winnipeg Jets. They've been probably like the surprise team of the entire NHL season. I think he's probably a shoo-in to be a finalist. And then LaViolette and Montgomery. LaViolette, Rangers haven't been playing that good in their last 10 to 15, but both of them have been leading the two best teams in the Eastern Conference for most of the season at this point. And although they, they do have a lot of talent, they've definitely somewhat exceeded expectations. Boston, we thought it was going to be like a retooling season. New York, we thought playoffs, but we didn't think that they were maybe better than like the Carolina Hurricanes or the Devils. And they've clearly been better as than, than we expected overall. Calder! Connor Bedard still, uh, considering this is right now not projecting with him having 38 games, 15 goals, 18 assists for 33 points. If the season ended today, he'd be a unanimous Calder winner. I, I don't think that's a debate. Considering he's going to miss six to eight weeks, I think it gives a guy like Brock Faber or Luke Hughes both a chance. Brock Faber, 20 points in 42 games, fantastic defensive results. I've talked about it at nauseum. What's he playing? 24-45 a night for the Minnesota Wild. He's become their number one defenseman. He's definitely going to be in the mix. He'd be my second place right now. Luke Hughes, a pretty clear third place, especially going forward with the Pavel Minchikov getting hurt. But Minchikov right now would be on my ballot. Luke Hughes, 23 points in 41 games. If he ends up getting 50, somehow even increases it up to 55 with Dougie Hamilton still out, him on that number one power play maybe he'll have an argument to end up winning the Calder trophy depending on how much time Bedard misses and then Marco Rossi I went with in fifth place 12 goals 12 assists 24 points in 42 games he's really stepped up after having a brutal season last year with only one point in 19 games he's established himself as a solid number one center or number two center my bad number two center playing around 16 30 a night I've been very impressed with him but you can make an argument for a bunch of guys in that five spot and I'm not going to absolutely kill you I think if the season ended today Day. Those four guys are pretty set in stone, similar to the Vesna Trophy. Fifth spot, y you can sound off in the comments, and I'd probably be like, yeah, I can see that argument over a Marco Rossi. Norris Trophy in first place. I obviously have Quinn Hughes right now on pace to potentially break 100 points. Has been very solid defensively. In my opinion, the best skater on the Vancouver Canucks this season, who have absolutely blasted past expectations. Kel McCarr in second, also might get 100 points if he can actually stay healthy this season. He has 49 and 38, I believe, as of right now. Playing and saying the defensive results haven't been as impressive as previous years, but when you're going for around 95 point pace and you're, his, his numbers are just like average defensively, it's not like he's Eric Carlson this year. I think he's a pretty clear second and maybe could contend with Quinn Hughes if the Colorado Avalanche go on an absolute heater and he continues to produce at a high level. Noah Dobson, third place. Noah Dobson gets my third place ballot. Right now, he has 43 points in 42 games, playing 20. 2550 a night for my New York Islanders, which is the second most in the entire NHL, only behind Drew Doughty, who's playing 2602. And he's been playing like 26 to 27 minutes the last 20 games. I think he's probably going to end up being like the goddamn time on ice leader. He has really carried this Islanders defense core. Fantastic offensively, really has taken that next step defensively, has really impressed me. I think that right now he'd be my third. Miro Heiskanen in fourth, not as explosive offensively, and I believe he's hurt right Right now, but when looking at what he's done, 37 games, 27 points, and fantastic defensively. Last year, offense was off the charts. Defense kind of fell off a little bit. He was just average to above average defensively. He has fully came back all the way defensively, proving that he is arguably the best top 10, top 10 defenseman in terms of a defensive standpoint. He is awesome. He is fantastic. And he right now, this season at least, has, in my opinion, been the star's best player especially with the Jason Robertson kind of taking a step back. And then lastly, I got Evan Bouchard. I might get killed for that, but the offensive production has been off the charts with 40 points in 39 games. And him and Ekholm has formed one of the best pairs in the entire NHL. Right now they have a 66.1 expected goals percentage while on the ice together. That is by far the highest in the entire NHL. They're outscoring opponents in terms of expected goals 2-1. to one. Their regular goal, sh goal share is like 61%. They have been one of the best pairs. Bouchard has been 
one of the best offensive defensemen in the entire league while being, although he does make some mistakes from time to time, and early on he has really sh- shored his defensive game up and has been fantastic, one of the better defenseman in the entire NHL. I think some other guys you can make an argument for here. I almost put Roman Yossi in. He has, I believe, 36 points in 42 games. has been okay defensively. But I opted for an Evan Bouchard. I know you guys are probably going to hate me for that, but I think he's been worth it. Selkie Trophy. Uh, I'm not going to dive into all of these guys' numbers in terms of their expected goals against per 60 and all that, because they've all been fantastic defensively. I go Barkov, just the most consistent defensive player year over year should be in Selkie consideration, rightfully so. Nick Suzuki has really lived up to that, what we were expecting over the past two to three years. He was always solid defensively, but he actually is fully playing like a goddamn Selkie contender this season. William Carlson has been great in his own right. I hope you guys enjoy that picture of him. He's been a fantastic second line center for the Vegas Golden Knights this season. Sam Reinhart. Having a career year always has been fantastic defensively. Him and Barkov form, in Evan Rodriguez form, one of the most locked down defensive lines as well as being fantastic offensively in the entire NHL, in my opinion. I think I had him like the third best line in all of hockey. And then Joel Eriksson, my doppelganger, also playing fantastic as well this season on the defensive side. Now we got the Hart Trophy, and I go Kucherov, Hellebuck, McKinnon, Hughes, Panarin. Kucherov, the Lightning are in a playoff spot right now. I know they might end up not making it, and if they don't make it, I probably will not have Kucherov winning this award, but right now, considering he has 28 goals, 44 assists, 72 points, leading the entire NHL in points. He's like fourth or fifth in goals. He is shooting at such an increased rate this season. He's absolutely peppering goalies with shots, and he's shooting at a pretty decent rate that is sustainable. I think Kucherov has to be your heart pick right now, considering they are in a playoff spot. Guys like Hedman have fallen off defensively. Uh, Stamkos, still point per game, but his defensive metrics are god-awful. Like This Tampa team is really not playing that good on the whole. It is Kucherov carrying them this goddamn season. Next up, Connor Hellebuck in second place. Again, I talked about it. Leading the entire NHL in goals saved above expected. A a 9-24 Winnipeg Jets. Solid players on that team. Morrissey, uh, Shifley, Kyle Connor got hurt, Ehlers, but he is no doubt the best player on this team, and it's not close, and the most valuable team player on this team, and considering he is a workhorse. Like last year, Linus Olmark, I eventually threw him out of even heart discussions just because he only played 48 out of 82 games. Hellebuck right now has 31 games out of 42. If he ends up low 60s, even maybe even mid 60s, if the Winnipeg Jets are battling for a central division at the end there, he 1,000% should be in the heart discussion. I don't think goalies get nearly in enough respect in the heart discussion. I had, I had Ilya Sorokin on my heart ballot last year because he dragged that Islanders team to the goddamn wild card. So if the Jets end up winning the central division, Hellebuck can maintain mid 920s lead the entire NHL in goal saved above expected play low 60s I think he's definitely gonna have an argument to be a heart finalist not even just on the ballot like I had Sorokin I think like fourth or fifth a heart finalist I do not think that is ridiculous third Nathan McKinnon really solidifying his argument for the second best player in the entire NHL after having 110 points last year in just 71 games he's back at it 23 goals 46 assists for 69 points. Nice in 43 games. Makar and Rantanen are playing fantastic as well. They're not. They're they're roughly on pace for career years. Makar offensively. Rantanen's going at about that pace compared to last year. So I can't say that he's maybe more valuable than a Connor Hellebuck, who is by far the best player on his team and is on the better team as of right now because of his play. But Nathan McKinnon has been fantastic in my opinion. This top three is the no doubt top three. I I might get killed for that because going to Quinn Hughes, I think Quinn Hughes has been fantastic as well. If he goes for 100 points, he should get a shit ton of heart votes. But when looking at it, Pedersen's going to go for 100. JT Miller's going to go for 100 points. Besser might score 45, 50. Demko could win the goddamn Vesna. So I can't, I still think he has been the best player on the Vancouver Canucks, but I'm not sure I can give him a, a Definitely not a second. Definitely not a first place heart vote right now. Definitely on my ballot. Has been fantastic. Some people might think I'm low, but just when looking at how many great seasons are on the Vancouver Canucks right now, he's a little bit lower. And then Artemi Panarin, 27 goals, 
32 assists, 59 points. More of a pass-first guy, similar to a Kucherov in prior years. He is absolutely ripping pucks on net like a Kucherov. I think it was like 2.5 shots uh, attempts per game. Last year, it's up to like over four now, and he's leading the Rangers in points by 17 points, with Trocek being the closest at 42. He has been carrying this New York Rangers team, carrying his line, although Trocek and Lafreniere have been good. The reason why they've been a top 15 line in all of hockey is because of Artemi Panarin, and he has been fantastic. So let's review it. Vesna. Adams, Calder, Norris, Selkie, and the heart. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about these picks? Who am I missing on these ballots? Again, I understand if you say Charlie Lindgren, because he's on a per-game basis, he's been arguably the best goalie in hockey, probably the best goalie in hockey. But let me know in the comments what do you think about this, who are your picks right now, and I'll be seeing you in the next one.